welcome folks to the lockdown special. As we've got behind me is most of my fishing gear. Currently sorting out my fishing room because I've got nothing to do and uh, just going to go through some bits and pieces which I find help me out to keep me fishing and when at the end of the day you, you want to be prepared and uh, this is how I try to be prepared. So as I've got behind me I've got big spools, half kilo spools of line uh, going from £25 to £20 or 15 it's not what I normally use a lot of obviously a uh, £15 line on my the likes of the Pen Fathom 12s um, which are phenomenal reel, use them a lot for placing also got 15 on the Akios Tornos if I want to go anywhere I want extreme distance and like place fishing and stuff like that, absolutely cracking reels I'll load them onto that um, £20 line on the uh, Fathom 15s mags, as you can see, these are running very, very quickly, and uh, one of my favourite reels really are to this day. They've uh, the, the fish I've had over the years on that, uh, on them, are phenomenal. Um, what else have I got here? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the. Uh, Dawa Sea Line X30s SHAs. I've actually got three of the SHAs running. I like to use them for like bremen and uh, depending on what line I'm using that on them really. Bremen and uh, Topin and um, a lot of North Devon work. I normally tend to use these reels. Plymouth, if I'm down on like uh, Devil's Point targeting cod or anything like £25 main line. I use them. Normally the 30s I use for 25 and uh, then I've got three. I've also got these little bad boys here which are the SHA. These are the SHVs aren't they? Yes they are. So that's, this is the SHVs. But the difference is there's a handle. But these are phenomenal. Really very very quick, lovely, very controllable and um, a lot of guys are using them with £20 main line and um, I like the wide spool, always I have, I have done, but um, normally I like to fill them up from Topin with £25 main line, obviously North Devon Coast, you never know what you're going to hit into, and uh, £25 main line on them, and uh, yeah, that's what I normally use. I've also got three of the Sea Line SHA, SH, we've got one SHA and two SHVs. Um, which I normally use for a lot of the rough ground work. So if I'm congering, if I'm bulleting, if I'm doing bits and pieces like that, that's what I normally use. So, to be honest, I don't think you can never have a rough, enough reel, especially if you're obviously getting prepared for different bits and pieces of fishing. You're coming home, you want the stuff there, ready to go, it's done. So normally what I do is I load them all up. Now, these are loaded up ready, a £20 Main line, ready to rock and roll. These are already done. I've done coming back from Britain and 15 pound main line with an eight pound shock leader. So they're already done. Um, I've got some de X demo stuff, what we'll be doing tests on. Oh, we've got the original, the Fathom casting special there. We've got the two Nitrons, which um, we're gonna do some filming with up and coming weeks. When, once we're allowed back out to play, that is. Main lines, so big fan of the ASO Bulletproof, 20 pound and 25. Um, I've had some amazing fish over the years on that. That's one of the things I like to keep in bulk of. Um, and the Inversilk from a uh, ASO as well, the 20 pounds, 25 pound, 15 pound, big fan of. Um, what else have I got here? So I've got the Azuri Hybrid. I like to keep that in bulk. Um, they're very, very hard to get hold of now, but I use the 20 pound, I use that for my sole fishing and my place fishing. And you can think what I'm doing, like flounder fishing and that as well sometimes. I like to use flip carbon. I've got a large selection of the Power Icon Power Monster. I use that for different strains, for different types of fishing I'd like to do. All trace lines, not rig bodies. Um, so, just ever bits and pieces I like to come in handy. Thick spool reels. Now, some people do a lot of different sort of stuff on that. I'm um, a big fan of the Namuras SW4500s. I like to use them for my bass fishing. 
So I've got them loaded up with 20 pound main line straight through. Obviously a lot of the fishing I'm doing for bass is, is, is close range distance. I don't need a shock leader. If I needed a shock leader I would attach one if I'm ever like using them in a the surf or anything like that. But um, I've got two spare spools then. I've actually got these empty at the minute but I like to fill them up with braid, okay? If I'm going anywhere like Kingsbridge and I'm using worm baits targeting flounder, that is what I would use. So I would use those fixed spools like that. So um, other bits and pieces, I've got the um, Trilene Berkeley Super Strong Big Game. Uh, this is a 40 pound main line. It's green vert uh, is a color. And I use that for my, it's 5 dollars on spool, it's quite, it's quite dear. I haven't been using this very long to be honest. It's it's a very strong line, um, 40 pound, but I use it for like congering or bullacing or places where I'm going to be fishing like that really. But I always used to use a lot of the um, Dower Sensor, 40 pounds, very strong line. And the Aslo um, is at the same time. Got some J Braid there, which loaded up ready for my reels. Um, we were venturing over to Fort Ventura and that was going to be the bad, the bad boys what I loaded up with. That's a hundred... I think it's 100 and something pound test strength. It's 46.5 kilos, it's 42 millimeter. It's just, just a bit thicker than my normal 20 pound main line, but that is what I would have loaded onto one of these bad boys. So, just get them out now. This is, now we've all got these. I say we've all got these, myself, Gav, Adam and Rob. These are the Quantum uh, Cabos, they're the 120s, okay? Um, finger stool, obviously for casting out and stuff. Now, I've looked at a lot of different reels and I think the Soltiga version of this sort of size spool is a lot, a lot of money. Now, for what you get with the reel, the smoothness of the reel, uh, and, the, and how they're made, you have got a lot of reel there for the money. I know they're very expensive, but that will handle anything. I'll use that now for a lot of my fishing, to be honest. I, if I'm going away, like Fort Ventura, if I was going to Norway, if I was going skate fishing, anywhere like that, where you're going to be spending a lot of time reeling in the catch, it's not like 10 minutes and it's in, or you know what I mean, when you're going into like half hour, out, three quarters of an hour, something what you want to make it a little bit easier. That's the one to go for. Um, I looked into it, I looked into different models of it, I looked into the Dower versions, and the, the Cabo was the one to go for, go for in my in my eyes. Um, some brilliant reviews about it, and um, yeah, it just it makes things easy. As I said many times before, at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with using fixed ball reels. I know a lot of people look down on it, but I don't at all. At the end of the day, you, you use what works for you. And um, I quite, I quite like, enjoy using fixed ball reels. The only reason I don't use fixed ball is anywhere I'm, using, I'm casting any distance. And I like to use a multiplier just because like that. And my preferred method is the multiplier. But if you're going to spend an hour on a fish, the last thing you want to be doing is in reel down in that position with a fish going on like that. It's it, it, not for me. Fixed ball, on the way, reeling in, comfortable. You want to shake, change hands you, like that. You know what I mean? You want to gain line, you're there. It's, it's just a comfortable way of fishing. And the drag on that is 75 pounds, which is a lot bigger than it would be on your basic multiplier. So that's something what I've got. And uh, I was looking forward to using from, um, for the uh, Port Ventura trip, what we were going to venture on. So there's a lot of more reels there, basically. I've got some other reels. I've got um, some tournament casting reels and that, what I've got the Akios Tornos for. So I've got another pair of six, uh, six five sixes and five six five, um, which I use for the lighter line again. I've got a pair of these little bad boys here, which are the Saltist, and these are the Saltis 30 HAs, actually Phil Stairs Mags. Take a look at that for a bit of kit, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in my opinion, that is one of the best reels available in the market. Now, I've had a friend that was of mine, Liv Johns. And I wasn't happy, I bought them and I wasn't happy with the drag system on it because that's the only thing that let it down. I mean, why you make such a beautiful quality reel and then just put a low end drag ratchet on it? Um, the ratchet which we've got in place now are modified, and as you can listen to that, you can actually hear that take off now. So when you're fighting rays and you've got rays running off and be a bait in that, 
beforehand I didn't like to because you couldn't hear so if I was talking to someone I wouldn't hear my ratchet go off now they're perfect ready to rock and roll so yeah I used that you actually used them the other day when I was place fishing down with Adam and um, yeah for for what you get and what you want them for absolutely perfect reels I mean really are but um, that's that's most of the reels now Rod wise, I've already got two rods, okay, so I've got the Century, well I haven't got just two rods, but I've got two rods what I use for all my fishing now. I've got the T900s, and I've also got a pair of the T1000s, which I use, obviously the T900s I use, in, I would say 85% of my fishing now, love the T900s, they'll cope with bristle channel work, you've got the backbone, they've got everything you want it for that it will produce. If I'm anywhere I want, I want where I'm going to be into the tip, and a lot of the pressure and that's on the tip, that's not when I use the T1000s, but I love, love them, T1000, T1 T900s. Um, tripods, a few tripods, they always come in handy, and bits and pieces, and then we move on to headlights. Now, I'm a big fan of, you pay for what you get at the end of the day, and I've also got two of these, which I love. They're the Petzl Ultra Rushes, all right? Very expensive, I got a deal on one of them and I've also got a deal, another deal on the other. And a friend of mine didn't get on with it, so he sold it back to me for what I paid, what I charged him for it. And um, that's like new, that one there, obviously you can see, it's, it's a, it is what it is, stood the test of time. But uh, very comfortable, like people say they're bulky, no, not really. Um, a lot of people are liking the other, uh, I'm trying to think what they're called now. The other, the other head like they seem to like, not the Petzl, but I'm a big fan of Petzl. I mean, you've it, it's, it's been around for decades. I mean, they, they produce some fantastic headlights for, for mountaineering, for caving, for fishing and stuff like that. And this headlight here is it gives me everything I need. It's it's got a few different um, settings for ranges and and on the light. I've also got the, the battery pack as well so I can charge it on, on the on the on the big thing and put it on my belt if I want to. But to be honest, the big battery for long sessions I put it on the back of my head, it's not it doesn't weigh a lot guys. You've got the accurate two battery and you've got an accurate four battery. So for normal everyday night sessions for going for a few hours, accurate two is plenty. Anything where I need like overnight sessions and that ac four, just put a couple of ac twos in there, job done. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, what else can we show, go through? What else we can, can go through? Um, wading boots. Now, I talk about these the other day. These go with the Sierras. So I've got the Sierra waders there. These are the wading boot there. And um, I went through the other day with them on the video. Fantastic grubs. Don't cost an arm and a leg. Very good quality and, and do the job. Plus this, studded as well. Um, I've also got another pair of these grubs. I like them that much. These aren't studded, okay? So if I'm going for a, like a beach session or somewhere, I don't need waders and that on. A pair of boots there, what are ideal for just chucking on and, and do the trick. But um, certified scales, I think it's a definite. The Brackner ones are, are fantastic. Anybody what's out fishing and taking their fishing seriously, especially to a like specimen level and that, you need certified get the scales, guys. If you it into a fish of a lot of you'd be guided. But um, there's that one. We've got... Um, I think these are great, I really do, I think these are great. These are the Tronics, little rig wallets, okay? I've got four of them there, I've got another four or five in, in the bag in there somewhere. Um, these are what I call perfect for the job in hand because you can load them up, as you see there, I've got a load of rigs made up in there. They are actually um, one of the ones I took up for grid. So I've got some pulley rigs made up in there. I'll make normally make these up with my blonde rigs, spotty rigs, Small light rigs are basically the same as what I use for spot here and small light in. Um, I'll have ones made up for the smooth round in, I've made ones made up for bream in, I've ones made up for sole in. And um, if, I'm, if I want to go, like one of the guys says, I fancy going bream in tonight, or I fancy going doing some rain tonight, I know I can come home, pick one of them up, chuck it in a bag, chuck a headlight, chuck a reel in, and I'm ready to go. I'm not going to have to go home and think, how do I, oh, I can't go tonight, I've got to go and make rigs, or I've got to make this. I mean, being prepared is, is, a, is a, way, a way way to do it. Um, it'll keep you on the fish and, and keep you catching fish. And that's what it's about. So, another couple of little, good little uh, little tips. I got given these by a friend of mine, Rob York. All right, 
They're perfect guys for if you're fishing any piers or anywhere like that, you can get them in on the side and clip them on. And then what we normally do is um, cable tie through there, straight on, and, and they're ready to go. You've got, you've got your rods set in place. Um, if you're using anywhere and you've got like a, you want to get your rod down low, perfect on the tripod either. And um, yeah, I'm not sure where he gets them from, but I've got two of them what you give me. It's perfect, absolutely perfect. So um, let's start there. Obviously a seat box. Tackle boxes, now with my tackle boxes. Big fan of just being organized really. You've got all my clips and swivels and bits and pieces like that, breaker leads. I've got one of them. I've got four of these, which I like to keep all my bits in. I'm actually clearing out the fishing room at the minute. There's another one in there now, it's got my beads, it's got cl clips and um, um, imps and uh, castle gauge swivels and just general bits and pieces, which I like to keep together. Um, shock leaders are another main one. Never have enough shock leader. Now, this is what I use for mulling, and as you can see, I've ordered in bulk. Now, you can't really get this anymore. It's very hard to get hold of. This is a six pound Urizuri, um, hybrid fluorocarbon, and uh, I've, got, I've got two of them in the six and two of them in the eight. At the end of the day, you want, especially when you're mulleting and stuff like that, you want to know you've got something on the line which is capable of landing anything what you're going to hit into mullet wise. And if you need a bully it, it's not going to snap. Very, very strong, guys. I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure what, I'm not an out and out specimen mullet angler. I do a bit of mullet fishing and that's what I like to use. And I know a lot of the guys from Plymouth Way, um, they love this stuff and it, it, is, it is. If you can get your hands on it, it's, it's stuff to really go for. But, um, Let's see, I've got that, that one there and that one there. So in here, I've got all my finlet mulleting gear. So all my mech spinners and stuff like that. This one here, <laughs> never actually got to use all that. You look in there, that is full wall to wall, Samson lures, trebles and all big fish gear from like Norway spinners and, and bits and pieces like that. Overseas sort of stuff, which I'm not going to use very often, but it's there if it's needed. And um, bait elastic. All right. Now I'm going to show you something now. Right. I can't get hold of this very often. A lot of tackle shops don't sell it, and I'm a, I'm a. It, it's lovely. I mean, there's a lot of bait elastic you get out there. That are very heavy, which I don't like to use. This stuff is perfect. Okay. And what I tend to do when they let me, just go to extra angling, Plymouth angling, and I go and pick up a load of them. So I've got like 20 or 30, 40 in there if I can get a round on them. And um, they'll last then, you know what I mean? Terrible for it. My mate Luke Johns will always say to me, so you've got a bit of elastic, I'll, I'll just go through loads of it, literally loads of it. Forever losing it, I think, half the time, but um, it's there, what is there? The bait enhancers. Oh, I've started to use this a little bit, as you can see up in Bridlington. Got the Cobfather lug and squid one there. Got the macro on that one there. It's like the same. Same. I've had some good results, to be honest with it, over the last couple of months, just before Christmas and after Christmas. Um, it seemed to produce a good up at the European Open uh, when we were fishing on the warm-up week, and the fish didn't. I suppose I think the fish picked up quicker by using it. It wasn't instant. It's not going to be nothing magical, but I think it does give you an extra little bit of scent, which helps put on the fish. So. They seem to do the business, guys, at the end of the day, which is, um, is what you need. But I've got sort of one of these here, obviously, there, just completely full with the rig winders and with loads of ready made rigs ready to rock and roll. Um, rig wallets, I've got all my token, token rig wallets, and that are just all total traces, total traces, ready to go if I ever wanted to go up to North Devon or. Meet the Welsh lads and stuff like that. And um, what is we're getting down through it quickly now. We've got the um, fluorocarbon, super fluorocarbon from Asso. Uh, that is the 0.35 millimeter fluorocarbon, very strong, ideal if you're on the beach, uh, placing or anything like that. Then we've got headgear. So, what I'm going to show you now is some of the stuff I like to use, especially for the winter, whether it's things. So, this year, now you can pay a fortune. There's, a, there's companies that do it, fishing companies do it. You can pay a fortune, right? That was 20 quid. It's a rab, okay? That go over the top of 
top of my head like that and it's um it's like a little balaclava really just to keep you warm i've got the that one there what I, I paid a bit of money for what i like to take to norway obviously if you're in snow and like norway you can just put it on and um when you've got your coat up and that you can see out through it and it just keeps you warm it's perfect for the job uh, one of these here this was another good one this is from rab this is a head warmer now if you're out on a winter night put that on and then put your will it, the, the beanie out over the top You'll be surprised how much warmer you would be by keeping your head warm. It's a thermal head warmer, so you basically it's under it's a base layer, and and it works. Okay, I've normally got my lucky hat, my vas hat, I'll put over the top, and um, it's pretty much job done on that front. Little little weight bags. I like to keep my weights in bags, so if I'm going, I've got them going a rock rock sack, and that it's not going to pierce and go through any of the bags and stuff like that. And um, what, what are we on to now then? So yeah, base layer. So I've got a base layer reed base layer set for the winter, which um, at the end of the day, I, I think, especially these base layers, you've got a double and a single base layer, right? From the reed, but based up in real cheat cheater, based up in North Devon. And um, they will keep you warm all day long. The, the ba double base layer is very, very warm. And the single one, to be honest, the single one does a trick, but if you're going over to Norway or anywhere it's going to be extreme conditions, then they double base layer all day long. They do a socks and all stuff like that with it. The old classic smock. Now, I have a little bit of grief from wearing it to Bridlington, but this here is something what I've had many, many years. And um, I've just basically put bits and pieces on it to follow my angling um, throughout over the time. Some of the fish I've had. So the places I've fished and stuff like that, obviously casting badges and European Open badges from going up. I don't normally wear it down here and that, but obviously when you're going up to somewhere like competitions and that, some of the old boys like to wear them and stuff like that. And it's just a bit memory memorabilia really of of the angles and stuff over the years. But um, we've got some other bits and pieces here which we went through the other day. So anybody who didn't see this feature, these are the snow bee. Uh, uh, not snow, the Sierra um, X Sierra X sixteen thousands, and these are very very nice. They're a uh, stocking foot trouser wader. Okay, so they don't come right up, but obviously it's, it's, sometimes it's nice to have a trouser, a trouser wader as long as you have a wader at the same time. Um, so I've got them. I'll go with the, the wader boot. Uh, these are a nice little addition. Titan fish bag. And your fishing matches and stuff like that, somewhere to put your fish in, or if you go and place fishing or somewhere you're going to take something home, obviously for your table, quite doing well. I quite like these. Adam gave me one the other day, and um, there. I don't know where the bit's gone, is it? Is there somewhere? It's definitely there somewhere. So I'll find it in a minute. But it's like a, it basically goes on top of your rod, it's a rod protector, a sensory rod protector. And um, he's, he's had one for a while, but they were quite old, I think. But um, he had a couple laid around which he, which he gave me for my rods. I never like to keep them in the bags all the time, guys, especially when you're going up and down cliffs and stuff. Should do really, but it's just quick and simple and it's less, late to, less weight to carry. And it's a nice little, nice little feature to put on the rods just to protect the tips and that at the end of the day. So um, there's that one there. I got this for uh, Fort Ventura. This is a, it's a fishing waste bag. So if I'm going, obviously, lure fishing anywhere like that, I want to keep some bits and pieces, maybe my wallet, maybe a drink and stuff like that. But it's perfect. It's from uh, Titan, it's one of the new, new new products from the range. Just wraps around like that. And then you've got front pocket on there like that. And it's, um, well, it's got everything you need on it, really, just for a nice little few hours session. Job done. You go on to the, um, Onto the rock sack now. This ear is perfect for any light sessions. Not sessions where you're going to need loads and loads of gear, but if you're going out for an evening after work or going rain and need a flask and a sand deal and maybe a couple of sandwiches and a drink and like a rig wallet, a couple of couple of things, it, that is perfect. Okay, absolutely perfect. Very light. Don't take up no room, and um, you get all your gear in there, which is what you want at the end of the day. So there's that one there, and then what else have we got here? What 
So we've got, yeah. so we've got um, the Titan mod bag. So that keeps, you probably get more than two mods in there to be honest. It takes your, um, your quiver where you can strap in or your tripod on the outside. And um, it just keeps things protected, which is always a nice addition. And that's about it guys. You see baiting towels, which I've got there. You can never go wrong, a couple of baiting towels and stuff. Little roof boxes and bits and pieces like that. But um, just a general bits and pieces, waterproof wise. I've got loads of different ones. Loads of sort of spinning reels. I've got the reed waterproof chest waders for like, to be honest, if I'm in rough, rough rain conditions where it's absolutely hammering down and stuff, I like to wear the reed gear. But the trouble is it is quite heavy at the same time. Um, but if I'm going like light showers, I'm going, going depending where I'm going really, I've got the uh, VAS 175 series, I've got the 350 series which is a bit more heavy duty, which is nice and light, like ideal for chesel at night time, keeps you nice and warm and stuff. And generally that's about it. I've got a couple of rods in there, mullet, mullet rods, a few flatty fanatics floundering and bassing and stuff. And um, some will say it's a lot of gear, especially with the real wise and that. But at the end of the day, the way you look at it is like this. You've got, I've got reels there, okay. There's like five sea lion fairies, right? I don't use them all for the same thing, but I'll have them load up one, one pound of line, them load up with different pounds of line, and have them for different things. And especially if you go somewhere like rough grafting, um, where you're gonna go through a lot of line and stuff, then it's always nice to have different reels instead of having to spool up on the mark and stuff like that. It's stuff you you get together over time, and obviously when I first started, I never had none of that. Like forty a couple of forty quid setups and stuff like that. What many other people have or watch programs and stuff like that. But by being organised and prepared, you um, it helps get you fishing. I'm not saying you need loads and loads of different things because you don't. But with the type of fish I do, I do need to sort of have reels at the hand for different different things. Obviously, if I'm going place fishing or I'm going soul fishing and I want to be at a mark where I need to be hitting 100 yards plus to get baits over onto a, over onto the clay, then I want a reel to do it. And obviously what, then what the reels are used to do it is either the, the, the um, Nitrons from Akios or the Tornos or the, or the uh, old Fathom 12s. Fathom 15s could use it for the job. I don't really need to because obviously I, I don't like I like to fish lighter line when I'm fishing for plates and stuff like that. Fifteen pound main line is more than an ample for that. If you hit into a form back or hit into a conga or something like that on chisel, you can you can adjust your drag and set it and play the fish accordingly, and you know you're going to land it. I've had rays do it and stuff like that. But it's basically it, guys. That's um, that's my day of tidying up. Now I've got to get all this in to the studio now. I'm going to, I've got, I'm, I'm, with a spare time I've got, I'm uh, creating a bit of a studio area where I can do a lot of filming for you guys in this lockdown period. So until then, tight lines, see you later.